Carl, thank you. And Jennifer, welcome to Squawk on the Street. Thank you, Seema. Great to see you today. Great to see you as well. Let's start with China. That's where you make about 25 percent of your total sales among the highest in the industrial sector. Uh, we're starting to see some restrictions lift. Is that uh, impacting the demand or, or the activity you're seeing at your factories there? As you noted, Seema, China is an important part of our business, both the products we sell in the country. It's a big market for us, as well as uh, some supply out of China. I'm encouraged by the signs that some of the lockdowns are, are lifting. What I would say is today still the economy has really been down for us in China um, and a lot of uncertainty uh, given the lockdowns and how that will transpire in the coming weeks and months. So how do you make your supply chain more resilient than Jennifer from dual sourcing to looking at some of your other manufacturing hubs like India where you make your hydrogen combustion engine? Well, as you said, dual sourcing is certainly an important part of it. Our strategy is in most places to produce product in the market where we're selling it. Uh, and m much of our supply base is in that market as well. And then globally, we look to have redundancy across our suppliers on our own manufacturing so that as we see uh, whether it's weather issues or other un uncertainty in, in supply that we're able to adapt and adjust. And that served us well in the last two years where we've seen significant challenge across our supply base. Now, clean tech has been one area where you continue to invest in. I know you just announced that you're now producing uh, electrolyzers, which are used in the production of hydrogen. How is that impacting where you're expanding your manufacturing base? So as a part of our, our growth strategy and decarbonization, we have a new power business that's investing in a range of zero emissions powertrain technologies and electrolyzers. And as you said, we see growing demand for green hydrogen and our electrolyzers globally. We're making investments and most recently announced that we'll put in place uh, electrolyzer production in one of our U.S. plants in the Minnesota area. 500 megawatts. And with the passing of the Inflation Reduction Act, we're really seeing increased demand here in the U.S. for green hydrogen and the start of building out an infrastructure that can support decarbonization of our industry. Hi, Jennifer. It's, it's Sarah Eisen. Just a question for me. Your stock has outperformed. It's up this year, double digits versus the industrial sector. I'm curious what you're seeing in terms of demand. We're, we're trying to read the tea leaves here on the economy, and we've gotten some mixed signals from the manufacturing sector. ISM picked up, but looks like we lost manufacturing jobs in the ADP report last month. What are you seeing? Yeah, we're, you know, we're really exiting uh, two years that's been unprecedented in our industry, where we've had very strong demand, and our customers have been using the products that we supply. But our and our uh, OEM customers' ability to supply to meet that need has been constrained by the supply base. What we see today is our products are performing well in the field, and there continues to be strong demand and a desire for us to produce more in most markets outside of China where the economy really is down. And so we're continuing to focus on delivering to those customers and meeting their needs um, while making sure that we're preparing for a potential downturn in the future by prioritizing our investments and focusing on delivering strong results. When I look at how our stock has performed, I think it's a reflection of that strong performance that we've had this year in delivering improved revenue and profitability and also our strategy and the growing understanding of Cummins growth strategy and, and, and how we're positioning for the medium and long term as well.